Bumper to bumper, we love them old cars. To the next cut in the um, in the club, which is a what we call a stock Honda, which is a, a controlled 125 gearbox. So they have a, a gear stick, they have six gears, they have a red plate with a yellow number, so we know the difference of them. Um, a 125 open, which is the open version of this, has a red plate with a white number, um, just so we know the difference in between all classes. So this cart runs is called stock Honda for a reason. It's a Honda engine that was uh, that started in America. So it's a shark shifter um, Honda engine that comes as a as a unit and it's um, stock and meant to be the same as the Rotex was. Nothing's changed. The ignition's original, the carby's original, the piston and everything's all the same in every cart. And this is also a good series of racing as, as in very close. No one can fiddle. It's all about the driver. This is probably the most controlled class we have in the club because the engine's controlled, the chassis's controlled, has to be front brakes. Um, seat has to be in a particular position, can't be back behind the axle so there's no lay down going on. The nose cone has to fit the same um, uh, form as the non-gearbox class so it's a set thing where it has, can't come back too far, can't be too wide etc. So there's a lot of um, rules in this class that keep them all the same. Other than that, um, that's about it for this class. I mean this class is just, as we said, it's a stock Honda class. So you put the engine on. You, there's a guy in our club that doesn't know anything about engines, but he races them. So you can just buy one of these. Prices for these, uh, for a brand new setup, could be 15 grand. Um, for a second hand one, there's a few going around between five and eight thousand dollars at the moment. So it's still good value. It's, um, and you can really choose from an in entry level into the club between like a non-gearbox, which essentially is an automatic, or a gearbox. So you've got your six-speed manual. Basil, g'day and welcome to Bumper to Bumper. How are you going? Yeah, good thanks. Today we've just got a we've got a 10.8 metre by 18 metre American barn here. That you guys have kind, kindly come out to actually put a, a, an epoxy flake on it. Now, what's that going to do, and what's the finish going to be like on that? Well, this is this is one of the most popular floors that we do, um, especially with people who uh, who you know like a great looking shed to put their cars on. Um, and what it does is it changes the surface of the concrete, so it's completely impervious. It, it's uh, it's impervious to petroleum products, uh, and it's uh, uh, scratch resistant uh, and uh, um, uh, uh, impact resistant as well. Today is our prep day, so the first thing we do is we actually read the concrete um, and we assess what's happening. Over here we've got this um, this, uh, this divot, which is pretty typical in a uh, in a garage floor. We we come across a lot of these sorts of things, and it's and it's critically important to have these repaired properly because if this isn't repaired correctly, the um, point load from a tyre or a car running over it will just cause whatever has been put in there to pop out. And we see a lot of that. We see people doing, trying to do that um, um, themselves and, uh, and then they, you know, they use some like um, garage paint or paving paint and, uh, and these sorts of uh, repairs just end up popping out and the paint peels off. What we do is we, uh, we fill those in so it becomes one uh, seamless floor. We lay down the epoxy and then we um, uh, we broadcast the flake into it and we broadcast it to the point of rejection. So we put so much on there that it won't take any more, essentially, which is the very best way to do it. And it builds up the body of it and it gives it um, it gives it a lot more strength. 
So uh, this is uh, uh, Braden, who's uh, starting the uh, process of mixing the uh, the epoxy, um, which is a really important process. If you uh, if you get this part wrong, the the, the whole project can go uh, a little bit uh, skew if as well. So he's, uh, it's a it's a two part epoxy. And the epoxy we use is uh, uh, is actually a waterproof membrane as well, so it, it, it acts as uh, uh, a moisture barrier for for the concrete, just in case there's any uh, uh, moisture coming up through the uh, through the substrate. This will prevent that from uh, happening as well. So it's uh, it's a bit of a double-edged sword. So um, this is the the flake that we use. It's a uh, it's a vinyl flake. It adds um, it adds all the body to the floor, um, and uh, we use um, one kilo of this stuff and it's really light and fluffy but we use a kilo of this per square meter which means that we broadcast it into the epoxy um, at, to the point of rejection um, it's, a, it's an expensive way of doing it but it's uh, it's also the best way of doing it